So we're now gonna go ahead and build the entire functionality for zipping up files like this. We're gonna go ahead and create a class and then going, going to head and require it into this index.php page so we can see the functionality and use the functionality we saw in the last video. So first of all, let's go ahead and create the class file. Let's just go ahead and save this in a folder called classes. And we'll save this as zipper.php with a capital Z for the class name. We give class names capital Zs uh, usually. So apart from that, I've got this files folder with three files in. These could be any files at all. So go ahead and choose any files from your PC. And we'll go ahead and start to write this class out. So let's define it first of all. We just use the class keyword and we call this class zipper. Now we need two uh, variables or properties if you like here. One is the list of files that we want to store and the other is the actual zip archive instantiation. So we have uh, the zip archive class, we're going to create a new one of them, store it here and then make use of it later on in other methods. I don't worry too much if you're not familiar with this kind of uh, working with PHP in this object oriented way, uh, it will become clear as we go along. So let's go ahead and create some private properties. One's going to be called files, and this is an array. So we're storing these details in an array, or these list of files in an array. What we also want now is a zip variable or property that's going to hold the zip archive uh, class. We're not going to do anything with that for now, but what we are going to do first of all is concentrate on the functionality that adds the files to this array that we've created here. So what we can now do is actually go ahead and require once on classes forward slash zipper.php. So let's go ahead and run this on our page and nothing happens. So we don't have any errors, which is a good sign. What we can now do is go ahead and create a variable and we'll do this as we go along. New zipper. You can go ahead and include the brackets if you want, but that's not necessary here. So when I refresh, Still no errors, so we're looking good. So what we're now going to do is go ahead and create the add method, which allows us to add either an array or a single string, which will then add it to this array of files. So if we go ahead and create a public function add, we're going to need to take input in here. So we'll just call this input because this could either be one file or it could be an array of files. So now we go ahead and we create an if statement. Now what we need to check here is whether the input variable or the input argument or, or property or whatever um, is an array. So I'm going to go ahead and say if is array input otherwise something else. So here let's just echo it is an array and here let's echo it is a string. So let's go ahead and test this out. We can use this functionality in here. Nothing's happening at the moment, but over to our index.php page, we can go ahead and say zipper add and go ahead and choose the file names to add. So in this case, it's files forward slash one, two or three dot txt. So I can go ahead and say files forward slash one dot txt. So what that now does is say it's a string because it's just a string value. But what I also want to do is add multiple files, and this is the reason we've included this functionality, so it makes it more convenient to add multiple files. I go ahead and create an array, the first being 2.txt, and the third being files forward slash 3.txt. Now, the argument that we've provided into this um, method is an array, and therefore we should now see the text, it is an array. So we've provided a string and an array, now we could, of course, as we've already seen, got rid of this, put this here, and then go gone ahead and get get rid of this altogether. So we want the same that we, we want that to do the same thing basically. But let's leave it like this for now, just so we can prove that we can use both a string and an array. So we'll go ahead and test this out. We'll add the relevant code in here, and then we'll go ahead and do a print R on this file just to see the contents of this of this array. So if it's uh, not an array, all we need to do is append the input to the files array. So we can say this files equals input. And we use these square brackets to break, basically say add an extra element onto this array. 
So now what we want to go ahead and do is, uh, if it is an array, we want to take a slightly different approach. So we say this files, and this files obviously refers to this here. So we say this files equals, and we use the array merge function. Array merge, not arrange merge. And basically what this does is take two parameters, the first being the array that you want to merge something onto. So in this case, we know that this files is an array. And the second parameter is the array that you want to merge with the first array. So we're basically merging this array here, which could already contain values, with this array here. And we know it's an array because we've done the check up here. So down here, let's go ahead and do a print R on this uh, files. And we'll go ahead and refresh. There we go. So we've now got, um, oops, let's go ahead and just get rid of this. Let's create a new method here, uh, which we can use because the reason this happened is because we're using the add method twice. It's not giving us the full, uh, where it's looking a bit messy. So let's say we have this create method. We'll talk about how we're going to fill this in in a moment. Uh, in fact, let's call this store. So we're going to go ahead now and echo out this files. In fact, we'll do a print R on this files. So let's go ahead and add this method in. And this method will eventually actually store this um, the files that we've added. So we'll just say store. So now what we get is the array combined with the, the one, two, and three files, they're all combined within one array now. So regardless of how we add them, we could go ahead and get rid of this, put this down here, and it would do exactly the same thing. Or what we could do is go ahead and use add like this three times with two and three like that. Let's go ahead and just revert that back to how it was before. So store, what do we want to do here? Well, we want to provide a location that we want to store this in. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say I want this to be uh, stored in files zipped.zip. So you can choose any file name really, but this just sort of makes sense with the zip extension. And I'm storing within the files directory. So we need to go ahead and add that argument in here. So location, and we're going to set this as a default as null because we want to check whether the user has actually provided or the developer has actually provided this string. So let's go ahead and just create a little if statement in here. We need to check the location, but we also need to check whether files have actually been added because there's no point creating the zip archive if no files have been added already. So let's go ahead and create an if statement. Now we use the count function to go ahead and count this files and that will return the actual count. So if nothing's been added via the add method, this will return zero and therefore this if statement will fail. And we want to check the location is there as well. By default it's null, so if this is not there, then this if statement won't be successful. So let's just go ahead and echo all okay. And let's go ahead and just see what that does. So refresh, it says all okay. If we go ahead and we provide nothing in here, nothing happens. And if we go ahead and provide something in there but haven't added any files, nothing happens again. So that's perfect. We know that this now works. So what we now need to do, let's think about this. Well, we need to go ahead and filter out any files that have been added that don't actually exist. So what we want to do is we want to loop through this these files and go ahead and check if they don't exist. If they don't exist, we want to remove them from the array. So we use the for each loop and we go ahead and choose what we want to loop through. In this case, it's this underscore files. And we want to loop through them as file. What we also want to do is go ahead and grab the index because we want to know where to unset this file from or which location we want to unset this file from if it doesn't exist. So basically, if we just echo index and maybe apply just a break on the end, you can see that this will give us 0, 1, and 2. So this is for file 1, 2, and 3.txt, and that's the location within the array. So now we just need one more if statement, and we want to say if not file 
exists. And this will basically just check whether the file, ex file exists. You pass in the file um, that you want to check and it will return true or false. If it returns false, well, we want to remove from array because we don't need it in there. It doesn't exist. Therefore, we can't add it to the zip file. So we use unset and we go ahead and choose which index of the array we want to remove. So again, it's this files. Then in square brackets, we choose the location. This can be 0, 1, or 2, as we've already seen. In this case, it's index. So for each file, this check will be run, and then the subsequent or, or the file that doesn't exist will be removed. So we can actually go ahead and test this functionality by doing a print R again on this files. Uh, so go ahead, we'll go ahead and refresh, and you can see that we've got all the files here. Now let's go ahead and try and add a file that doesn't exist. So I'm going to say zipper add files forward slash 4.txt. We know that that doesn't exist within this folder, so therefore that should be removed from the array. So when we go and refresh, it's still not there. So we're only now containing within that array the files that do exist, which is really important because when it comes to adding them to the archive, it will fail if it can't find the file. So there's one thing we need to do before we go on any further. And what we need to do down here is go ahead and open the zip file using the zip archive class. And that can be found within sort of natively within PHP. So what we need to do is we need to instantiate it when our zipper class is instantiated. So we need a public function, and this is the construct function, and this will be run when the class is instantiated. So when it's instantiated, we'll just go ahead and echo uh, OK or something like that. When we go and refresh, you see that just says OK. So this is this is run at the point when it's instantiated. So what we want to do now is go ahead and set this zip property here. So this zip as a new zip archive. So what that's going to do is create a new zip archive with native that this is sort of baked into PHP. And that will create a new zip archive that we can then down here go ahead and add files to. And this is the actual functionality that creates the zip file. So I've gone ahead and refreshed and everything's still working. So it's a good sign. So now down here, after filtering through all of this, let's just pull that up down here. What we want to do is the first thing is go ahead and open the zip. Uh, the second thing we want to do is loop through files and add to zip. And the last thing we want to do is close the zip. So that's all we need to do. So let's go ahead and do the first one, uh, open the zip. Uh, let's just pull that down here. So we're going to open this, but we're going to open this within an if statement. And that means that it will check that this file has been opened successfully and then go ahead and within that do the functionality. So we'll go ahead and create an if statement here and open this within it. So we refer to this underscore zip, uh, this zip, which we've instantiated up here. And there's a method in this called open. So we go ahead and open the, a zip at a specific location. Now, where do we get the location from? Well, we already know that it's been provided here like this. So all we do here is pass in the location. Now, there's also the ability to choose whether you want to overwrite or create an archive. So if we want to, if, if, the, file, if the location that we've provided already exists, we want to overwrite it. Otherwise, we want to create the zip archive. So we're going to go ahead and create a ternary operation here, which checks the file exists. So file exists, again, location. So this time we're checking whether the location this that we've provided exists, not these files. So we're not talking about these at all. It's just this here. So if that does exist, what do we go ahead and do? Well, we want to go ahead and say zip archive overwrite because that already exists. Otherwise, what do we want to do? Well, we want to go ahead and create it. So zip archive create. So once that's done, we now can say echo 
all okay, just to say, yep, this, this file has been opened successfully, refresh and all okay. So we know now that the zip archive has actually been created um, successfully, not actually created, but opened, ready for files to be added. This will only be created once we close the file and we say everything's okay. So we sort of open it up, add what we need to it, and then finalize it by closing it. So within this if statement now, this is everything we need to do. We've already opened the zips, uh, the zip. Now what we need to do is loop through the files and add each of these files to that zip file. So we go for each again, and we want to loop through the filtered files that we've already filtered through. And we want to say this underscore files, and we want to loop through these as file. Now within this, just a single line, very, very simple. We just say this zip as we've already seen we've opened it up here add so we use the add method uh, sorry the add file method and we go ahead and choose the file and the name within the zip and in this case i just want it to, the, the actual file that we add so this is the location and then the name of the file in this case i'm just going to call it exactly the same thing but you can define a specific name and in the example we saw previously this kept the file location so we had zipping up for example files one within the zip you'll see a folder called files and then a file called one so it maintains that same structure so once we've done that we come down here and we say this zip close so we've done both of them steps now so let's just run through what we've done here because this uh, is slightly more complicated we have filtered out any files that don't exist by just removing them from the array that we added to when we use the add method and then down here we open up the actual zip file if the zip file already exists we overwrite it otherwise we create it which makes sense and then we loop through each of the files that we've already filtered we add them to the zip archive and then we close the zip archive. So that's it. This now will should should work. So let's go ahead and just refresh. In fact, let's check our directory again first. So in files, we're zipping all of these into a folder in here called zipped.zip. So let's go ahead and refresh. There we are. So nothing's sort of come up on the screen, but that's normal. We're not outputting anything. But now within files, we have this zipped folder here. So let's go ahead and again open this up and we'll just bring this over here. So within files now we have this zipped folder uh, or zip archive. Within it we have files. Remember we're maintaining the structure that we, uh, we add to. When we click on this we've got three files and then when we go ahead and open these they obviously contain what was in the original files. So that's how we create a class that basically just wraps around the initial uh, well, the original functionality you get with PHP and provides a really easy way to add files to a zip archive and then go ahead and store them in a particular location.